Yes, YouTube. Let's have a look at this one, eh? The Pilgrim Society. I'll read it for you, eh? <laughs> you can just sit back and chill out if you want. The mysterious super elite Pilgrim Society, the most illustrious worldwide personalities, the most distinguished international organisation in the world. The Pilgrim Society remained hidden until relatively recent years. To identify the apex of power referenced towards end of document, plundering international looters, gaining riches, injuring mega millions, secretly equaling pilgrims. If this is your first read on the organisation, blah de blah, we don't need to worry about that. Um, for the rest of you, take note, silver and silver mining will be mentioned around 50 times. If you have followed the series today, I have other disturbing case material which, to inform you, there is a boatload of fascinating material, fascinating material I hope to acquaint you with. <clears throat> you should be fiercely interested in this society. The rich families behind central banking because they are interested in you, to your great detriment. And they do not wish their identities known, else they'd release a membership list. A movie quote, they live. We could be pets, we could be food, but all we really are is livestock. The pilgrims could protest if they chose to, that I class them as a secret society. Actually, they don't meet the criteria for that definition, by every measure that exists. No elitist organisation appears to meet that standard, but these things are a matter of relative basis. When not one person in 10,000 has ever heard of an organisation that dominates their destiny, it's secret. The pilgrims do fulfil the definition of secret society by the most important test, which is, as I say, they refuse to release a roster. Some will say, why should a private organisation have to release a membership list? Do we demand a local, local Rotary Club or Lions Club to release members' names? The difference is one of degree. Since we've already seen that the President, Secretary of State and Ambassador to Great Britain are always honorary members and that this fact fails to appear in any known textbook on government or political science, this is sufficient to need to know who all the members are. These are far from ordinary people. They are, they are those who can and do powerfully influence events at the highest levels. Exactly with which globalist financiers, warmongers, and international cartelists do our highest officials run with. Additionally, I have noted that over the decades, numerous ambassadors to many different nations have been members, also generals, admirals, senators, congressmen, treasury, secretaries, federal reserve officials and so forth. Since these men are in control presently of our national destiny, it is urgently necessary to know who they are. As a few examples, if a list were accessed, names likely to be encountered would include representatives of the traditional Big Rich, Rockefeller, Mellon, DuPont, Whitney, Vanderbilt, Harriman, Pine, Pitcairn, Pugh, Phillips, Pratt, Harkness, Aldrich, Weyerhauser, Duke Reynolds, Coleman, Dorrance, Schiff, Folger, Field, Fisher, Flagler, Roosevelt, Guggenheim, Gold McCormick, Berwind, Lehman, Stillman, Baker, Livingston and others, to executives and directors of Citigroup, J.P. Morgan Chase, Bank America, Bank of New York, Wells Fargo, Mellon Bank, American Express, Merrill Lynch, Depository Trust and Clearing Corporation, Overseas Electronic Exchange of Shares, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley, Lehman Brothers, Prudential, Financial, Aetna, New Life, IBM, Exxon, Mobile, Chevron, Texaco, Conoco, Phillips, Slumberger, Halliburton, Duke, Energy, El Paso Corporation, Bechtel Corporation, Alco, Newmont, Mining, Phelps Dodge, Microsoft, General Electric, General Motors, Ford Goodyear, DuPont, Dow, Chemical, Eastern Kodak, Union Pacific, Walmart, Coca-Cola, Philip Morris, I don't forget Coca-Cola, right? <laughs> they, uh, <laughs> they extract one of the flavours from genuine coca leaves, right? And then the byproducts of that, nobody really knows. <laughs> uh, Philip Morris, good year, DuPont, doubt I've done them, haven't I? Anyway, it goes on. Halfway Washington Post, New York Times, Tribune Company, Time Warner, various in communications, Johnson & Johnson, it's still like Lambert, Mert, Company, Bristol, Myers, Squibb, AstraZeneca. Uh, it just goes on. So we don't... Well, you've got it to read. Pretty much covered the lot there. I only get 15 minutes because I'm a naughty boy. We already know where they are taking us toward world government. In a re uh, World government is here now. It was here probably in... <sighs> it could have always been around, couldn't it, really, in a way. And they just like have these little wars and all big wars. And the reality is it's just a show. 
You know what I mean? Like uh, the set where Gaza gets bombed. That is a set. <laughs> and a few actors and a bit of bullshit, meaty spin. You're away, aren't you? Your uncle's called Robert. Uh, so, the, using the United Nations as a facade, the world's most powerful organisation is Anglo-American or British-American, with key rep- European partici- participation via intermarriages, according to Skolnick's report. The Bush family is heavily involved in global narcotics trafficking in connection with the British Crown and its older and wiser status, and mentions pilgrim investments as the Bush conduit, and even mentions the Pilgrim Society, but doesn't go into much detail. At least word is getting around our mission should uh, be to pull their collective pants down, expose them and their revolting plans, and put them out of business. Speaking of Mr Bush, fellow Pilgrim Society member William Stamps Farish III quoted him as saying, America, is, America has no truer friend than Great Britain. Apparently he did not watch Mel Gibson's film The Patriot. In this view, he would not have been supported by President Jackson. Farish gave Bush's campaign 107,000 for which favour he was appointed ambassador to Great Britain. It seems Farish wanted the post badly because he already hosted Queen Elizabeth II four times in Lexington, Kentucky, allegedly in connection with the sport of thoroughbred horse racing. Farish was chairman of Churchill Downs and owns many racehorses and farms. Maybe she wanted an update on what the Crown's Pilgrim Society network was doing to impoverish the middle class here en route to the return of to medieval feudalism. Farish and the Bush, fam- Bush family participated together with the Zapata Offshore Drilling Company. His grandfather founded Humble Oil and Refining Company in 1917, which became the largest subsidiary of the of what became Exxon and was a founder of the American Petroleum Institute in 1926. He is a member of the Council of American Ambassadors, another focal point for the society controlled over our foreign relations. Five members identified so far as directors. Farish III, probably a billionaire, to return to the UN, it wasn't only the United States and its elitists who created the UN. The British and some Europeans also played a role. It was located in the United States, probably because our sovereignty can be weakened. The other nations will follow. In May 1979, I attended a speech at Texas Christian University in Fort Worth, given by Sir Ivor Seward Richard, born 1932. They have long names, don't they? The British ambassador to the United Nations and head of the Security Council. Currently, the main elitist at TCU as a trustee appears to be Winthrop Rockefeller Jr. Pilgrims, whose father, Arkansas Governor, pardoned all the killers on the state death roll. President George Bush, the first made junior chairman of the President's Council on Rural America, who the deep plant at TCU was in 1979, was probably a lesser figure. The university official who introduced Sir Ivor was ecstatic and fond, simperilingly over the British Tory redcoat until I thought he'd ask the audience to genuflect to him. The officials pointed out about Sir Ivor being a member of the English-speaking union and the Fabian Society of Great Britain. A politically radical front, he chaired the Rhodesia Conference in 1976. I waited for the announcers to state about Sir Ivor being a member of the Pilgrim Society. That announcement never came. Next, I waited for the Britisher to mention his membership in the Pilgrims and to tell the audience anything about the Society. He made no such utterance. Below, note the emblem of the Fabian Society of Great Britain, that of the wolf in sheep's coat clothing. A combative posture. I came equipped with a tape recorder and sat on the front row. Try as I might, I could not get selected to ask a question of the distinguished man, probably because I had a large tape recorder and also because I was wearing a T-shirt featuring a blown-up Pilgrim Society emblem. Although its details might not have been discernible past 15 feet, after the question session was adjourned, we were informed that a basement reception was to take place. Sir Ivor saw me working my way towards him several times, and the first time he noticed my shirt with the emblem, he went all white. All this time I had the recorder running. Finally, in frustration, I manoeuvred myself in front of him in such a way that he would have had to run straight into me to pass me. As we were inches apart, I asked him, how do you like my shirt? I am not a person who claims mind-reading ability, but often you gather the mood of the other individual by the facial expression. He was frantic. I was not supposed to have that emblem, or to know he was a member. How did this person know of the society and his membership in it? He must have wondered. He took advantage of a gap in the crowd and swiftly rotated away from me, where he was mobbed by autograph requests. I wouldn't have cared about that. I would have asked for a 1979 list for both branches, updating the then 10-year-old list. I had the rare luck to come by. He would have given me current lists like he would have given me his eyeballs. Quite dignified as far as everyone else present understood. 
I recognised him as the cell block looking creep he was. During his speech, he mentioned to us about his maternal grandfather, William H. Seward, who, as Secretary of State of these United States, made the Alaska Purchase from Russia for $7 million, consummated on March 30th, 1867, where mostly family in the Pilgrim Society, William Seward below. Oh, he looks a right charmer, doesn't he? Eh? His son, William Henry, born 1839, was a colonel in the Union Army and was listed as head of banking firm of William H. Seward and Co. Starting in 1860, who was who? 1897 to 1942, page 1106, which page also showed the Sewards married into the Freling Geisen family. Old Dutch colonel land fortune, later holding sugar interests and congressional representation. Was he out fighting or sitting behind the lines? Banking. President Lincoln had been murdered at the war's end and Secretary of State. Was he? Was he really? So you don't know because he wasn't there. I, I did a video, like, I, I deleted it, like, but, um, you know, were they real? You know, because you can make anyone up, can't they, really? You know, pre dicking you know, these are actors now, what we're looking at, aren't they, in this world right now, really? They're only actors, you know. Yeah, political leaders, you could swap them around and they could do each other's job just like that because they're just paid actors, aren't they? Um... And Secretary of State Seward was no longer under Lincoln's restraining hand. Seward now worked for a British allied New York and Boston political faction representing all Lincoln fought against. Mexican, ab <laughs> Mexican ambassador Romero suspected treachery from Seward and had worked directly with Lincoln during the war. Romero couldn't have liked Seward's British connections as the British were long against silver money. And Romero wrote a pro-silver article, The Silver Standard in Mexico, in the North American Review, June 1895, in which he mentioned the Bank of London and Mexico. The 1969 list for New York had a John Wesley Seward, an attorney. Sir Ivor was a barrister, the British version of that term. John was a director of the Dars Corporation, which may be linked to Mexico. We had another Pilgrim Society member linked to funding revolutionary activity in Mexico earlier. <laughs> Read about the dangerous Mr Pierce later. <laughs> Another Seward, George, born 1910, a member, I do not know, was a director of Helmet Corporation, Titanium, part of the Mellon Holdings. It's a pyramid, it's a pyramid. 1903, the first, it's a, officially. Brand new, really, aren't they? But we know that won't be the case, don't we? Very undermentioned, aren't they? I don't know how you say it, but Joel van der Raegden, or Ragen. I thought there'd be like some, a bit more juice on him, but there's very little up on YouTube. So, I mean, they give us this information, but there's a, a vicar there, and he's, if they've been found that they've got a, they've had a stillborn and not reported it. But, yeah, it looks like it could be a bloody vicar trying to use the uh, old satanic power there, doesn't it? It seems a bit panties, but they've put it on the news, whatever that means. If you like reading, you've cracked it, haven't you, on this video? <laughs> So basically, the monarchy has got the reins of America, and it? Well, I would, I would say that's standard knowledge, that, really, but to what extent, I don't know. I suppose they control the puppets, don't they, through, you know, fear and bribery and amazing wages and whatever else they can get out of it, eh? Plus they're in the satanic clique, aren't they, you know? Yeah, I watched the lad's video before, he's saying we're F-U-C-K, no, we're not. We're not F-U-C-K, the fat lady on the song yet. That's really what, that's one of them is. That's really what the, uh, they want to break your spirit, don't they? And you've got to give them that. There you go. You want to look at it yourself. We'll be one.